Two more documents, though, with classified markings were discovered at a Florida storage facility not far from Trump's Mar-a-Lago Home and Club following a search carried out at the direction of Trump's attorneys. That's according to two people familiar with the documents who spoke to NBC News. They say the documents were turned over to the FBI, confirming a report first published in the Washington Post. But the nature of the documents was not revealed. The discovery comes nearly four months after FBI agents executed a search warrant at Mar-a-Lago and found more than 100 documents with classified markings, including some that were labeled top secret. The storage unit where the new documents were found is in West Palm Beach and is run by the General Services Administration. One of the sources said Trump had never been inside that storage facility himself. The New York Times reports the discovery came after Trump's lawyers hired an outside firm to conduct a series of wider searches that were completed around Thanksgiving at Trump properties. Those properties include Trump's golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey, Trump Tower in New York, and a storage closet at Mar-a-Lago. The discovery of the new documents is further evidence that Trump and his team did not fully comply with the grand jury subpoena issued in May, seeking all documents marked classified still in their possession. The FBI declined to comment. The Justice Department has been conducting what it has described as an active criminal investigation into whether the White House documents found at Mar-a-Lago were mishandled, as well as possible obstruction of justice. It seems like the government, the DOJ, the FBI are doing their best to give them a chance to hand over the documents. I mean, this is really quite, quite remarkable. They've been very patient, starting right? with the National Archives asking for a year and a half. Just politely. Could we get the documents? Could we get the documents? And then when they went and seized the documents, the government said, are you sure there aren't more? Right. Keep looking. Now we have the story. Let's bring in congressional investigations reporter for the Washington Post, Jackie Alamany. She is an MSNBC contributor. Jackie, good morning. What more can you tell us uh, about this story? This was, as Mika pointed out, this came from within uh, Trump's circle of lawyers saying, let's hire a firm to go and see if there's more stuff. Let's look at Mar-a-Lago. Let's look at Trump Tower in New York. And yes, let's go check out this storage unit. Right, Willie. Uh, that's exactly right. But it also came at the behest of uh, the D.C. Circuit Judge Beryl Howell. And after uh, multiple concerns were uh, expressed by um, counterintelligence head Jay Bratt, basically prosecutors, the DOJ, the FBI, uh, continuously expressed concern that Trump and his folks had yet to fully comply with that original grand jury subpoena that was issued in May that requested uh, and demanded that all classified documents, all documents with classified markings on them, be turned back to um, uh, the FBI and, and the DOJ. That uh, included um, documents not just in Mar-a-Lago, but at other locations, hence why you're now seeing after the, the judge instructed his lawyers to continue to search for these documents at all other Trump properties. Uh, so, uh, you know, most recently we had the, the search happen at the life storage unit, which, uh, as Mika noted, is being paid for, was, was being paid for by uh, the General Services Administration, and that was storing sort of a hodgepodge of materials that uh, the former president had at the White House and then transferred to Florida after he left the White House. Pr prior to that, during the week of Thanksgiving, there was a search of Trump Tower, um, where this outside team and the lawyers attested that they didn't find any classified documents, and then previously Bedminster. But at the life storage unit, they did find two documents, or two items, rather, with classified markings, which I think really underscore um, not just sort of the breakdown of distrust between prosecutors and the Trump <clears throat> legal team here, but also the fact that the former president was not taking care of these classified documents, uh, that he did not not just improperly take them back to Mar-a-Lago, but that uh, he had, in some, in some instances, had completely lost track of where these were and that they were not in any sort of proper storage storage uh, unit. 
Hey, hmm. Jackie, Sam Stein here. I actually want to pick up on that, the negligence element of it. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm married to one, but I'm not in this particular uh, field of the law. But what kind of liability do you have uh, for negligence in keeping these documents and storing them and not keeping track of them? And then more broadly, uh, the other question I had is, you know, we have seen the, spe the appointment of a special counsel. It's not necessarily for this case, but it could be. I'm wondering how all these legal issues bleed together or if they are just separate on separate tracks and what kind of vulnerability that means for Trump. Yeah, a lot of good questions, Sam. Um, they are actually all on parallel tracks, technically under Jack Smith, the special counsel's uh, purview. Uh, and actually, the documents investigation is moving at a bit of a more rapid clip than the January 6th investigation. Uh, and there is some speculation that if uh, the special counsel were to ultimately land on an indictment, that that would come first with the classified documents instance. As for the liability for the former president in uh, really not caring and, and mishandling and inappropriately taking these documents and the liability he has for that, that's exactly what prosecutors are trying to discern right now. I mean, people have gone to jail for far less. Uh, Sandy Berger and, and many others. Just go look at the National Archives website. They've got uh, a very long laundry list of people who have inappropriately taken classified information or presidential records throughout the years and again, have faced criminal charges. Um, but, you know, prosecutors want to get a, a rock solid case down. We've talked a lot about the Espionage Act and where this sort of falls on the sliding scale of severity on the Espionage Act. And as my colleagues, uh, Devlin, Barrett, and, and Josh Dossi have previously reported, right now prosecutors are, are viewing Trump's uh, motive as more, uh, less um, trying to st sell state secrets and more motivated in the fact that he wanted to keep these documents. Uh, it was ego-driven. He felt like these these items, the letters from Kim Jong-un and other high-profile presidential items were his. Uh, regardless of that, though, you know, he still could face some, <clears throat> some very similar criminal charges. Washington Post, Jackie Alamany, digging deep on this story. Jackie, thanks so much. We appreciate it. We